Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing more of the new Banished Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which after we select our starting hand, our entire deck gets banished. That fundamentally changes what kind of cards we want to have in our deck, and this one is absolutely crazy. So let's go give it a look. So today we'll be playing a Northern Realms Uprising deck that is all about spamming a bunch of resilience so that even if we can't draw cards in between rounds, we still get a ton of carryover, making it really hard for our opponents to beat us. So the primary way that we're looking to do that is by spamming as many copies of the Meditating Mage as possible. So when we have at least two Meditating Mages on the board, if we use its order ability, it will gain the vitality, but also gain resilience, giving us carryover. So we have, of course, two Meditating Mages in our deck, but then we have stuff like Rune Mage into Zoria Runestone, which could potentially give us Meditating Mages, but is mostly just set up so that for our other potential Meditating Mages sources, they just become a little more reliable, such as Chapter Wizards with Rune Word, which can certainly, at least after Rune Mage, give us a very good probability of getting more Rune Mages. And then outside of that, Mushy Truffle is a guaranteed Rune Mage, and also another source of carryover. Once we have at least one Rune Mage on the board, we can create more with reinforcements. If one of them happens to get destroyed, we can bring one back with Necromancy. We can also use the rune words from our starting deck to make meditating mages, again, more effective once you've used rune mage. Then we can also use megascope to create additional copies of it as well. And so once you have all those meditating mages on the board, you spam all the order abilities and get a ton of resilience, a ton of carryover from all of them. And ideally, if you can, you play Taseya on the same turn that you use all those order abilities, and that means that not only will all those meditating mages carry over into the next round, you'll get their order abilities back, which means you can reuse them in the next round and either just get more vitality or potentially get another round of resilience. And so get all those units in round one, two, and carrying over into round three even at that point. And if you don't get Taseya, there is a slightly more limited version of that, that is to use Casting Contest, which can reset the order ability on one of those mages. So again, the idea is you get a bunch of meditating mages round one or round two, get the resilience, and then once they've carried over, you use this again to uh, either get another bit of resilience or just get the order ability back to reuse the vitality as well. And then outside of that, we do have a little bit of additional resilience coming from Vandergriff. And we also have some toll removal because it is very common for our opponents especially Nilfgaard, which is generally the meta in this event, to run things like the Imperial Golem and Tibor, which are 12 and 13 points respectively. So Villain Threaten Mirth is a great way to take those cards out, as well as similarly a Heat Wave. And as long as those cards have not been boosted, then you can use Vincent and he will drop them down to one point, which is of course almost just as good. And then we do technically have Spell Weavers, which because we have a lot of spells and a lot of mages, can get a lot of damage, but for the most part, this is not the primary focus of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to focus on all the carryover from the Meditating Mages. And that's just about it. So that's the big idea of the deck, is basically spam as much resilience as you can possibly get with those Meditating Mages. Use a few cards if you can to repeat those order abilities to get resilience in another round as well, and use Tall Removal like Villain Threat Mirth and Heat Wave to get rid of your opponent's tallest units. We do also have Siri, which is a clever way to help us get card advantage in tricky situations, like if our opponent is going first and we just drop a Siri, then puts a lot of pressure on them to, well, do they still try to win the round and give us Siri back to our hands, do they not? So it's a nice little tool to have in your toolbox to break out every now and again. But that's just about all there is to it. So let's go see it in action. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here. And we'll go first. All right, and so we have several meditating mages and a few ways to create additional meditating mages. But maybe we dump this spell weaver. Yes, it is worth a lot of damage when we have this many spells and mages, but... It's just not really what we're focusing on here, so I think we can do better. And Casting Contest helps us to reuse the Order Abilities on Meditating Mages, so we're just all in on the Meditating Mages, and that's the idea. So, since we have Blue Coin and our Stratagem, I think we are probably going to push pretty aggressively here in Round 1, and try to get all that carryover heading into Round 2 and push for the 2-0 win. That's probably the plan. And so, with that in mind, we'd like to get Meditating Mages down as quickly as possible, to maximize the effectiveness of the patience here on the order of abilities. All right, Francis Bedlam for hand boosting. Interesting. I and mean, for what it's worth, he would be the highest card not named Villain Threatened Mirth, so we would destroy him. Not necessarily sure he's 
important enough to do that too, especially when that means that they're probably going to have some bigger cards that they're waiting to play. So I think we hold off for now. And let's instead go with things like Mushy Truffle and then Rune Word and try to get as many Meditating Mages out here as possible. All right, Old Geared. That's an interesting one. High base power. Can't re reduce that power with Vincent, but we could destroy it with Villain Treadmirth. So that is theoretically still an option, but I think we still proceed with our plan of spamming these mages. And I'm deliberately trying to start with the guaranteed sources of mages. And then later on, we'll finish with things like Rune Word to see if we can, you know, this is not guaranteed. We want to make sure we have the maximum amount of time with mages on the board to increase the value of their order abilities. So, you know, if we play a rune word early, miss, and don't get a mage, then that means that we lost a turn on our mages. Okay, they're going to use Vilga Force to get rid of one of them, which is uh, a typical play for meta Nilfgaard. They're going to lock another one. So they're playing aggressively here, but I mean, these are, of course, for them, just tiny little bronze four provision cost cards. But uh, we still have a way to continue to create, several ways to continue to create more, of course. So we shall continue here. And unless they can create another, which is possible for Nilfgaard, with some assimilating stuff like Duchess's Informant, they won't get the carryover. They could still get some vitality out of that. Alright, it's Master of Disguise, which will get boosted now. We do have a locked unit. But we're... In that case, I mean, we might be playing more for round two and three than we are for just round one and round two. We'll, we'll have to see. So now, at this point, we're looking at the not-guaranteed mages, I think, with Runeward. Probably what we're going for here. And we did not get a Meditating Mage specifically. So, do we have anything that we'd like to damage? I mean, potentially. I think we'll go Banard Student here. But this is exactly what I mean. We deliberately... Let's flip this, just because tempo-wise, we're obviously not yet caught up to them. And we'll, we may want to use these abilities soon. The reason why we don't care that much about tempo is because we have the carryover, of course. We're all for poison. I'm curious who they use it on. And it should be on, yeah, Meditating Mage. Although, a little peculiar that they didn't choose to use it on the one that had a higher value order. So, I think it's going to be Rune Word, then it's going to be Villain Treadmirth on our last turn, plus activating whatever mage abilities we have remaining at that point. So, let's go. I mean, technically, we could put Vincent, set you down to one, and destroy you with the Banard Student, which, if they don't have additional poison, would be a solid play to prevent them from removing this, but... They might. Uh, it is popular to have Cadaverin at the very least for, uh, for Nilfgaard, and we've not yet seen that. Maybe that's worth giving it a shot. Because they're, they've been doing hand boosting with Vincent, or rather with Francis. So uh, it is going to be a little bit tough. A little bit tough. I'm going to do this just in case they're about to remove you. Um, since Vincent can only reset cards that have not been boosted... They might only have boosted units remaining at this point. Or at least we're going to find a time where that will eventually become the case. So we had to rush them a little bit. There could be, of course, a 12 points Golem or a 13 point Tibor, which would normally be the Vincent targets, but and those probably haven't been boosted by Francis, but who knows? Vanamar will destroy you. That's not a huge issue. So, I think we're still looking at Rune Word here, looking for, excuse me, Rune Word here, yes, looking for a Meditating Mage, perfect. And then it's going to be Villain Threatenmirth, and activating all these Order Abilities. Okay, well, there is Cupbear, destroy, oh, purifying rather than destroying. Interesting choice. Okay. Just verify that, yes, Old Geared is still the highest powered card right now. So that means that Bill and Treadmirth will destroy you, and that sounds good to me. So they have already used their 
a leader ability and hopefully all of their lock and lock removal and Vilga forts and what have you. So my hope is that they won't have an answer for Villain Threat and Mirth at this stage. Let's activate these. Of course, this might get destroyed. We'll have to see. But that will remove a 10 power card, which gets us pretty darn close here. We, of course, do still have Mushy Truffle and Leader Ability, which we might need to use. Let's see. See how much also they didn't activate this, which was kind of odd. So we're going to get boosted by 1, which gets us to 31. They're going to lose a 10. So they'll drop down to 30, so we have just enough. So there we go. We win round 1. And although it did take us an extra card to do that, we now have... Oh, we have Mushy Truffle... Still the order ability on that. We have Casting Contest, which we can use to reset the order abilities on these mages to uh, regain the resilience going into round three. So we can play both of these cards in this round and have nothing remaining in round three and still have units on the board. Granted, they might have another round of poison, which would be unfortunate. Also, these cards are split between different rows, which means Mushy Truffle is uh, it's not going to be worth that much to us, unfortunately. This is also a higher value order ability. So this would normally be the one that you would prioritize for casting contests obviously it has poison on it so it is not ideal from that standpoint if they do still have a way to remove this but they don't with Anna Henrietta and as we were just saying for us when you don't have many units that is not that effective but now we can go casting contest here as well Activate this ability, and so we can either spam and try to see if we can win in this round. We are in the lead here, so we would force them to play additional cards, or we... Well, yeah, we're not going to play anything in round three, because we aren't going to have any cards left, so we need to do this now. Should try to boost you, because this might still get removed. Let's go here, though, and do this. So can they catch us? It's actually a lot of points they need to put up here. Defender, which has gotten a lot of hand boosts. So once the battle preparation comes in, it's a decent point slam. Imperial Golem is as well, but they have no cards left going into round three. So they may have won round two, but our resilience alone means we automatically win. All right, so going up against monsters here. And we'll go first. And we're looking to maximize the total number of meditating mages. And right now we can get one with Mushy Truffle. And we can then bring it back with Necromancy. But that's about it. And that is, okay, one with Rune Word probably as well. That's still a little lackluster. So let's dump one of the Redanian Elites here. Vincent is good for dealing with tall cards. And given how they at least have that nine-point Woodland Spirit, that's decent. But still doesn't address the somewhat lack of meditating mages that we're looking at here. Let's maybe get rid of the Scytheman. And to say it can help synergize with those mages. But okay, that's another way to get one. So do like to see that. Let's begin with the Rune Mage. And with that, we can, of course, increase the likelihood of us getting the card we want whenever we're creating something. And so, I mean, it's possible, but unlikely we get a mage here. Uh, Anything that we feel particularly inspired about? I mean... The 20 Sergeant can help us get inspir inspiration, so uh, in that sense, maybe. And let's use Magic Lamp. There's a... I mean, we could just pass here and settle for the cards we have on the board, because that's a decent amount on turn one, but we would like, of course, to... Oh, well, I mean, now you're just... Now you're just inviting us to either Vincent or Heatwave. So, I mean, that's a hard opportunity to pass up here. But it's not urgent, technically speaking. I think we might wait on that a little bit. I mean, unless you're going to hide it behind a defender. Even if you do, we can heat wave defender and still get you with Vincent here. Or Bill and Treadmurth. We have a lot of tolerable, really. So I think let's proceed with Chapter of Wizards here. And use this to get... Oh, no meditating mage. Wow. That is very unlikely to happen. But we did not, did not succeed this time. All right, well, in that case, uh, what would we like to do instead? I am not entirely sure. We are going to play a few more mages, but still. Yeah, this round is not going to go that much longer, but... 
Yes, we'll go. Eratusa student. That was not what we were looking for. Pretty sure there are, what, like six bronze mages you can get with that. And so it is extremely likely that once you've played Rune Mage, you see the exact mage you're looking for. But, uh, what, something like a one in six chance that you don't. So we struck out that time. We can guarantee that we get it, though, if we go with Mushy Truffle. So I think we should do that here. To guarantee we get a Meditating Mage, and then we can proceed to spawn in another Meditating Mage, like so. And so we're going to go aggressively in round one and use the Meditating Mage carryover to carry over into round two and maybe go for a 2-0 push. And of course, now all these cards will get destroyed when they lose their armor. Makes me wish that we'd gone the damage route rather than the boosting route. Okay, now admittedly, I would have liked if you had proceeded to have played a little bit further. But we do have the resilience here on Mushy Truffle, and we'd like to get the resilience on these Meditating Mages. So I think what we'll do is we'll go activate these abilities and use Tissaia to reset these abilities so we can use them again in round two, and that means it'll help us push for the 2-0 uh, in the next round. So let's just... Yes, I know. Does mean we need to play another card, but because we can make sure that we get the resilience on two cards and get the order back on those two cards, it is still worth it, I think. So, I mean, sure we can use this. Technically speaking, we should not use this Air to a Student order ability because we could, if we really wanted to, use Necromancy to get her back in a later round, which means that it'll be a slightly stronger boost if we would like turn it into an actual point slam of sorts. But we'll leave it here, and that does mean we get two resilience units going into round two. And so we are two cards down here, which does make matters more difficult, but given how we have Villain Tread and Mirth, Heat Wave for Aunt Vincent for Tall Removal, and more ways to either get a Meditating Mage, or at this stage, probably would be, that Air to Choose a Student back, I think we're still looking to push a bit here, and we could even go all the way in round two and use casting contest on a meditating mage at the end of the round to reset that order ability, and that means we can still get the, uh, I mean, well, yeah, we can still get the carryover here already from just these order abilities right now. So let's, I mean, technically speaking, let's rune word and see if we can get another one. Once again, okay, no, we got one. Thought we just totally struck out once again. Was rather surprised that that was going to be the case, and they forfeit here. They cannot handle all the carryover. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here, and they'll go first. Okay, so I do really like Siri in round one, especially when they're on blue coin, we're on red coin, because we can potentially get some nice card advantage out of that. We we'll have some tall removal with villain Tretonmirth and tall countering with Vincent. However, we're mostly trying to build around the resilience here, and we can possibly make some of that happen with Rune Mage to set up Rune Word and Chapter Wizards and Reinforcements, but let's get rid of maybe a Scythe Owen. If we get a, a uh, Meditating Mage, then Megascope can create another copy as well. Let's dump one of you. That can help us reset one of our mages, and that's potentially another mage right there. All right, the Ardfiend Tortoise. So I think what we do is, although with this deck, we actually kind of like having a long round one, we want to either have a long round one or a long round two so we can set up and benefit from all that resilience, because if we're playing it all in round three, then it doesn't mean much to us. But still, this is, I think, just too good of an opportunity to pass up here, where we play one card, yes, but if they, if they pass here, then of course we can play one more and catch them. If they don't, uh... Or if they just pass right now and win, then we get Siri back, and that means we have card advantage. All right, they're going to steal her. I mean, obviously, they aren't going to actually draw into her because they don't have a deck. But it means now they've used a, well, well, I mean, a pretty solid removal card nonetheless. And should make Villain Treadmirth, in particular, much safer in the future. So either we still proceed to push right now and set up our carryover or we wait to do that in round two. The risk is they could drive past in round two, and that means the resilience is not very significant at that point. But I think we still go for it here, to tell you the truth. I think we do at this point. So let's, in that case, lead off with Rune Mage. 
into Soria for Northern Realms, and okay, there's nothing to destroy here with Death Blow, is there? No, but that actually wouldn't be bad. Hitting that Ardfiend Tortoise, because that will remove the armor and boost you, giving us solid value. So we've already caught them, in fact. And apparently that's reason enough for them to use Cadaverin, which is a strong card. On a 5 provision siege engine. But, okay, so now what we can do is we can load up Melee Row with a bunch of our meditating mages. So, why don't we start with, well, probably, Chapter Wizards, as that is a potential source of carryover. We're looking for the meditating mage, and we got one, so let's use it. Then next turn, we'd like to use... Megascope to create another copy of it as quickly as possible. Okay, they're gonna try to poison this, I assume. Oh no, well, get rid of that because they already had a round of poison on it. Does that make sense? Let's probably create another meditating mage here. And then do this. So we're trying to load up on, on as much carryover as possible by just getting tons and tons of meditating mages, and we have scared them off here. They do not want to mess with it, and so they will forfeit. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here, and they'll go first. Okay, so we're looking to maximize our resilience primarily with these Meditating Mages, so we want to be able to create additional copies of them, which with Lushy Truffle, Megascope, and Rune Mage to set up a more likely Rune Word into Meditating Mage is not bad, but we might want to get rid of some of these non-resilience guys over here. So let's dump maybe one of the Scythemen. Vincent can help us with dealing with tall cards, which is a particular problem with Nilfgaard. So maybe we dump you as well. Okay, Casting Contest can of course help us get back the order abilities on our Meditating Mages. And that's a decent point slam there with the Nilfgaardian Knight. So what we can do is we can either just pass here and say, all right, now you've played a card more than we have, and you're not going to draw into anything in round two, so you might try passing round two. On the other hand, we kind of want to have a long round and use all of our resilience to carry over into the next round, and if they try passing round two, then there's not much benefit in us going that route, because we're just going to have all our resilience in round three with no additional benefit from that. So let's lead off here with Rune Mage into Zoria, and maybe we get a Meditating Mage here, although it's quite unlikely, <laughs> if only. No, we don't have a deck. So, and admittedly, none of these are great options for us right now. What do they have on the board? Eh, not like Bombardment's going to help us all that much here. Maybe we could Redanian Archer if we think this round's going to go longer. So, the plan now, let's see, Magni Division, that might be the last thing they play here. Honestly, we're okay if it is, because we want to... Get that carryover set up, yes, but I don't, and honestly, we could even go Vandegrift here if we were thinking that this round might not last that much longer. It's not enough for us to catch them yet, notably, but we could go, let's do Mushy Truffle, I think, and with that, that way we can get a Meditating Mage guaranteed out here. Now, one is not that significant because we need two to get that Resilience. Okay, Urchin. Which technically we could destroy if we were to weaken it with Vincent and then hit it with the Archer a couple times. Granted, might prefer to just take out Nilfgaardian Knight. That's a short term, definitely better. But now that we have at least one Meditating Mage out there, we'd like to start creating additional copies of it. Like so. And maybe we hmm, tempted to just hit Urchin and see if we can convince them to flip it so that he's not as impactful in the long round, because we are trying to make this round go a little bit longer here. So we want to make sure that we get this Meditating Mage out as well. Tibor, okay, so that is the ideal card for us to use Vincent on. Because that is worth a lot of value to us. That's a 12-point play from the order ability alone. So, do like that. 
On the other hand, getting Rune Word out here for another Redini, or rather, Meditating Mage would be nice. Or playing the one directly from her hand. So I think we still do this. Unless they play Defender here, we should still be fine. And if they do, then uh, that would be a little tricky. But we're going to take our chances, I think. And we get the other Meditating Mage out here. So we now should have a decent amount of carry over here. So they think, tempo-wise, that they've done enough to stop us. But problem for them is that we can now go Vincent and we can almost destroy you. Let's see. We go Vincent. It's our best tempo option. That is not enough yet. I mean, technically, we might have wanted to still go a little more resilience with Rune Word, but we could drop Bandagrip on our next turn. So I think we will still want to play one more turn here because obviously this is not enough yet. So like to get rid of you. Ideally, can't do it just yet. Yeah. Let's... Also, do we keep this? Let's see if we can. Let's wait one more turn. No, I think we might need the resilience. No, we'll be good. I think we'll be good. Between resilience, ah, uh, but these boosts as well. Okay, now that the math is going to be... Math is maybe still not going to quite work out in our favor here. Let's see. So we go... Vincent, or rather Vandergriff for the uh, carryover. So we're close. Now we activate these. Now we destroy the urchin so it no longer gives them boosts. And we are not quite there yet. Okay, now if we we're anticipating we're going to have to use Uprising, then it might have made sense to use the uh, the mages on our previous turn. And that would mean, uh, I mean, I guess, let's use Mushy Truffle. We'll just go Mushy Truffle here. Because that should give us enough even after their boots there. So, obviously we win round one. We played more cards than them, but we were willing to do so because we got this carryover with all the resilience. And now, with casting contest, we can proceed to get these meditating mages back on, uh, or get their order abilities back. And we can also potentially rune word, which would give us another meditating mage as well. Both of which are uh, things that we'd like to do early, so we can get the patience taken back up. Technically, you have the highest patience, so you would be the highest priority to go after here. Let's... Yeah, let's prioritize that, because we don't know if we're going to get Rune Word into Meditating Mage. It's almost guaranteed. Almost guaranteed, after having used the uh, Rune Mage in round one. Now, with... Four turns, yeah, we probably want to activate it now, especially because we already have more than enough vitality here. So yes, we've played more cards than them, so we have fewer cards in our hand remaining in round two, but our hope here is to basically force them into committing almost everything in round two here to catch us, and therefore, even if we don't win round two, we bleed them so much that they carry over from this meditating mage and... A subsequent meditating mage or two may be too much for them to handle. Now, not a huge fan of the poison, of course, from this cow carcass, because I imagine they might have more coming soon. Okay, so we can cast in contest here, and I think probably will now to get this back, and we'll actually we'll wait a turn before using this, because the boosts do not carry over from one round to the next, but Vitality does. So actually waiting and getting some of that Vitality into round three is a nice little bonus to have. Morale gives them more poison, which means they're going to, yeah, go after Vandegrift here. Still not enough for them to catch us yet. They can use that order ability to get rid of you, so deliberately did not use the uh, casting contest on you, of course. So now let's go Rune Word, and we're looking for, yep, another one of you. Oh, that's okay. A little concerning. Yeah, thanks the Empire for actually much better poison removal there. But what that does do is, yes, sure, they have caught up to us thus far, but we can still get two more resilience units on the board and then combine that with a couple of Lyrian Scythemen, which it's not going to be amazing tempo because we aren't going to have that many boosted cards, but it will be something. So we do this and this. 
spread the boost around, which triggers this Scytheman. And then we play this Scytheman as well. And that's decent tempo at that point. And of course, we do have two carryover units with our double resilience here. So they may be able to catch us. Okay, well, obviously, we can't do anything with the puzzle box. It's just a seven power card they're getting. Imperial Golem is a point slam. And it is enough for them. But this is the thing. They have one card. We have zero, so we can't play in round three. But we do have two units starting on the board. So what do they still have remaining? Because it all comes down to that. Is it big enough? And they're gonna have to boost us. And so we get the we get the vitality and take the win. So there's a look at a Northern Realms Resilience deck for the new Banished Seasonal Event. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.